Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Rafael from Nobugs Project. And today we're gonna see a Java challenge about advanced overloading. So just gonna share my screen. Okay, so we have some methods here and we are invoking those overloaded methods, execute action. And then we have, uh, we are receiving here an object, an object for args, the stack overflow error along type and a double primitive type. So I'm gonna give you some time and then you can let me know when you're ready and then you can answer what is the output of this challenge. Okay, then, so let's see the answer. -na 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 -na. Oh, nobody got it right. <laughs> oh. Okay, so yeah. let's... <laughs> so let's see why. So this one is pretty tricky and it's it's quite difficult to realize what method will be invoked here, mainly on the situation here. But I will explain each method. So in the first one, we will be invoking um, this method passing uh, an integer and a true boolean. So the method that suits that better is this one, because an integer would be out of box to the integer wrapper, and then it would be widened to object. But uh, we have also a true value here, which makes easier to go to an object since nor integer or a Boolean wrapper can be a stack overflow error. So this one is the best, uh, the best choice to JVM. Actually, is the only one that's suitable here. And it's important to mention that when we invoke a method without any parameter, and we are also using var args, um, it's, it's possible as well. JVM will choose the object that's more specific. So in that case, would it be Stack Overflow error? We could change, for example, to exception. It would be the same. If we choose a, a, an object that's more specific, the JVM will choose it. So in the, in the third method, we are invoking uh, the execute action uh, method with an array, an int array, and another int number. And this one, again, uh, the most suitable option Actually, the only one the, the only one that makes sense is uh, this one, because as uh, as we know, uh, an int array is an object in Java, and the number one would be wrapped into an integer wrapper, and then it would be widened to an object again. And here, the same rule of widening would be applied. Yeah, this, this one would go to double because it's far easier to the JVM to widen a primitive type to double than uh, wrapping this primitive type to a long wrapper. Yeah, it's, it's, it's far easier just to widen this, this type. Here we are invoking the method with an integer number. And again, we are going to go to the widen rule. One would be widened to double. And here as we are passing a double wrapper, again, the widen rule will be used. So it's far easier to the JVM to just widen a double to an object since a double is an object. Yeah, in Java, every object extends object implicitly. So yeah, that's far easier to the JVM. And then we just print it. There are some other things that are tricky here. So if you put, for example, one other invocation here, for example, putting char, then we would have 
an error called uh, the execute action is ambiguous because the compiler uh, wouldn't know what to do. It would be too ambiguous, those invocations. There are some small details when you are using Vargs. And yeah, that's it, guys. Do you have any questions? Oh, all good, man. Very, uh, tricky, very tricky code you did today. <laughs> yeah, very tricky. No questions. Nice I'm, challenge. I'm Thank good. you. The, the, just to say, the only thing that I was sure is that Avarar can be empty, but all these rules that you, you, you said from widening the, the object to, to maintain a primitive, that is that was tough because you, on the daily development, you, sometimes you just forget these things because it's all random for you, so you don't need to think much about it, but it's very nice to know what is the, the things happening behind the scenes. So thanks a lot for sharing this, these small details. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. But so, one important uh, point I'm thinking about when we call an, a method passing no arguments. So uh, whatever argument, uh, whatever varargs you have, it would, would it be accepted. Uh, I don't know if I understand it correctly. When you call the QT action passing no argument, if you have a one, one is a question is a QT action with a whatever arguments there, whatever parameter, it would fit. So actually what happens here, um Derival, when we invoke this uh the method uh without passing a parameter you can realize that um it will invoke the most specific object so here we used seven and then when we run that seven will be printed the the jvm will choose the object that's more specific but it's important to emphasize that uh, this will only happen if the vargs parameters if they are related to each other so for example an exception is an object and an sql exception is an exception so in that case it works but if we use some uh, object that has nothing to do with exception then it it will be ambiguous it's impossible to the jvm to know which one to invoke, if it is integer or exception, since they have no relationship. So now we're gonna have the error. But if you if we go back to SQL exception, seven will be printed. All right. Oh man, that's a, that's great. Good to know that. Okay. So it's important to know those details because we might have some bugs that are really annoying. And then if we don't know those uh, those concepts, we would waste a lot of time just to understand what is happening <laughs> so it's very important to know these concepts so i'm just gonna show you uh, some extra things so I, I will put this link on the video if you want to go even deeper into advanced overloading you can read this article and i'm just gonna show you this table so on primitive types, we have boolean, byte, char, short, int, long, float, double. And this is the range of them, of their values. And also, what I want to show you is the rule of widening. So a byte can be widened to short, or a short can be widened to double. An int can be widened to float. A, a char can be widened to all of them to int, to long, to float or double. So we can use the same rule for objects. So if an object is in higher the other one, we can use, we can apply the, the, the same rule here as we were talking here. For example, an exception is uh, an object. And in this, this example here, a double is an object. So the double, 
type would be widened to an object. That's why we get the value one here. And that's it, guys. Any further questions, any comments? I'm good. OK. I'm good. OK, then. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. OK, guys, so those, uh, this was the advanced overloading challenge. So as I said, they are very important concepts because you will find bugs that you have to know concepts really uh, profoundly. And this will make a difference in your code because when you know what's happening, you just use better tools and you make your code much better and much more flexible. So if you want to know more, you go to knowbugsproject.com and there's a section there called Java Dev Gym. And please give a like and subscribe to the channel because it will help me to create more videos and bring more value to you. So that's it and see you next week.